The next speaker is Takaaki Kachita, and he talks about the status of Kagra. Okay. Um, good morning. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much for the kind invitation to this conference. Well, this morning, uh, I want to talk about the status of Kagra and its science goals. <coughs> um, this is the outline of this talk. Uh, first, well, I have a very brief introduction. Then I want to move. I want to move on to the overview of Kagura status, plan, and science goals. <coughs> well, of course, all of you, all of us, have have seen a fantastic results from LIGO and Virgo. So, well, we'd like to congratulate the LIGO and Virgo collaboration. So, all these results told us that, that now it is clear that we can do many important science with gravitational waves if we do it right. Therefore, we are working hard in the Kagura collaboration to contribute to the uh, science of gravitational waves. Um, so, I want to talk about the uh, overview of Kagura. Uh, well, first of all, the location. Well, the Kagura is located at that, at that place, and actually it is in the uh, mountain area, and well, Kagura will be located in underground. Um, the interferometer is, uh, is there in this mountain, and actually, in this mountain, um, there are super Kamiokand and Kamland experiments. <laughs> well, then you may ask what would be the uh, um, configuration of the Kagura. Well, this is the schematic view of the Kagura optical system. Well, Kagura is a, a, just a huge micro interferometer that has optical cavities in the arms and recycling systems. So, the system is actually quite similar to the LIGO and Virgo optical systems. <coughs> and in addition, um, one of the very important component is the vibration insulation system. And the, this is the, again, the schematic of the Kagura's vibration isolation system. Well, actually, the um, concept is quite similar to that of Virgo. We have the inverted pendulum and then multiple um, pendulum system. So that way, uh, mirrors are suspended. But there's some difference between Kagura and Virgo. Um, in our uh, system, the vibration isolation, uh, details of the vibration isolation is, well, actually determined based on the requirement um, on each um, system. So for example, the main four arm mirrors are suspended by a 14 meter high vibration isolation system. Um, the, uh, the beam splitter and the signal recycling system also needs to be a relatively good vibration isol isolation. So uh, this is, um, uh, well, compared with the main um, vibration isolation system, the vibration isolation for beam splitter and the signal recycling is a little bit smaller but still it's a big one. Then the vibration insulation for the power recycling is much simpler, and even simpler is the uh, um, mode cleaners. So we, we, need, we need to install all these vibration insulation system into the Kagura um, interferometer. Then maybe uh, you ask, what are the key features of Kagura? Well, 
there are, we, we think there are two key features. One is, as I said, uh, Kagura is located in underground, actually deep underground. And therefore, the seismic noises are smaller compared with the uh, uh, seismic noises on the surface. And the no noises are reduced by approximately two orders of magnitude. So we think this is an advantage of Kagura. In addition, um, we use cryogenic mirrors for the four main um, arm mirrors. And here I show you one of the uh, sapphire mirror that, that is cooled down to 20 Kelvin. Therefore, um, we expect that the uh, thermal noises are reduced. And these two are the main key features of Kagura. Now, I want to move on to the status. Well, this is the uh, timeline of the overall Kagura um, project. The project was approved in 2010. And as I said, this is underground interferometer. Therefore, we had the tunnel excavation in 2012 and 13. Then, well, at, the, at this time, the uh, preparation works were going on, and we had the initial three kilometer interferometer operation uh, in 2016. Well, at that stage, well, the inter interferometer component at really the minimum we installed. Then uh, we move on to the serious installation of the vibration isolation system and the cryogenic system. And well, later I want to come back, but um, at the end of April this year until the early May, we had the uh, test operation of the um, cryogenic mirror system with the interferometer operation. And well, although we had the test operation in this May, the construction work is still going on, and we hope that we finish the essential part of the construction in the spring of next year, and we hope to begin the operation at the end of the next year. So this is the overall timeline. Um, now I want to show you the status of the construction briefly with some photos. Um, these two photos shows the uh, beam tubes uh, for the three kilometer by three kilometer arms. Um, these beam tubes well, the diameter of these beam tubes is up 80 centimeters, and these tubes were uh, installed and connected and tested and leak checked at the end, at, at, in March 2015. And at the same time, the installation work for the vacuum tanks for the mirrors and vibration isolation system was going on. And um, this photo was, well, this is at the uh, central area, and this photo was taken in the fall of 2015, and you can see a lot of um, vacuum tanks, and in there, the vibration installation system and the mirrors are in, to be installed. Well, actually, I show you this photo because nowadays, if we take the same photo, then the situation is like this. So basically, you cannot see anything about the uh, vacuum tank. But all, all these vacuum tanks are covered by the cream booth. And in there, uh, people are working hard to, to install the um, various components of the interferometer. So these photos show you uh, the, our works in underground in Kamioka. So this is the installation of the beam splitter. And this is the installation of the uh, 
14 meter high vibration insulation system. Actually, um, well, Kagura is underground. Uh, therefore, in order to install the 14 meter vibration insulation system, we made the uh, two floor tunnel system. So the installation is made at the higher level and the real cryogenic mirror will be located in the lower level. And this is the optical buffer. And this is another uh, photo of the installation of the mirror. So we have been working on these installations for the last several years, and we still have to work, continue working, prob probably um, until next spring. Um, well, of course, um, we have to operate the uh, interferometer, and of course, um, if we have uh, any human activity at the uh, underground site, that would be the noise source. Therefore, we have to operate the interferometer outside of the um, uh, underground site. And indeed, um, well, this is the uh, interferometer, and we have the uh, um, office building here outside of the underground site. And well, and basically, we are ready to operate the interferometer. Actually, uh, in fact, we already operated the interferometer as, a, as the test operation from this room. Now, I said that the main key feature of Kagura is the cryogenic mirror system. We drive to reduce the thermal noise, which is one of the main issues of the um, present day interferometers. So um, the, we, we, we suspend the mirror um, through the vibration insulation system. So the mirror itself will be located here. Then this mirror is suspended by the cryogenic uh, suspension system, which is located inside this cryostat. Then this whole cryogenic suspension system is suspended by the um, room temperature vibration isolation system. And I already showed you how we work for the installation of the room temperature vibration isolation system. The work was done at the second floor. At the same time, we have been working hard to install the um, cryogenic mirror and suspension system. And here I show you the status. Um, well, first of all, um, the cryogenic mirror is um, sapphire. And, well, in order to suspend the sapphire mirror, we need some preparation work, and this is done at the outside, in fact, at the University of Toyama, which is a nearby university. Then the mirror is uh, uh, transferred to the uh, Kagura underground site. Then the mirror was suspended into the uh, cryostat, and this photo, shows the celebration of the installation of the first cryogenic mirror on November 30 last year. And well, since then, we installed the second cryogenic mirror and we are now working on the installation of the third mirror. <coughs> well, I said that we had the test operation of the uh, um, interferometer at the end of April to early May this year. And well, for this test, we simply wanted to test if the interferometer can be operated with the uh, cryogenic mirror. And therefore, uh, for this test operation, the interferometer configuration was really the simplest one. Um, we, we used the uh, we used the uh, simple Microsoft interferometer, but with the two sapphire mirrors, and one was cooled down to the cryogenic temperature. 
And well, we had about 10 days of the uh, uh, operation time, and during these 10 days, we carried out various tests and, and so on. But here, I want to show you just two examples. Well, this figure shows the uh, um, cooling down history of a mirror, the first mirror. So, well, the cool down went well, as expected. And, well, around 27 days, the temperature went down to about, to say, 25 degrees or so. But it was a little bit higher than expected. And the experts realized that the, the cryocooler got, got into some metastable stage, state. Therefore, we decided to stop cooling cryocooler and restarted the cryocooler again, and then the mirror cooled down to below 20 Kelvin. Anyway, from this experience, we learned that we need about one month, or more exactly 27 days, for cooling down the mirror. Well, that is non-trivial. The mirror is uh, 23 kilograms, so we successfully cooled down within a month. That is good. Well, and then the another figure shows the sensitivity. Well, actually, I hesitate to show this because, well, at this stage, we don't care about the sensitivity. We simply wanted to test if the um, cryo mirror can be um, operated. Anyway, people took the sensitivity. And well, this red one is the uh, sensitivity in this May, and the um, gray one is the one that was taken during the very initial three kilometer interferometer test two years ago. <clears throat> well, of course, well, in this um, test operation, we didn't care about the sensitivity, but anyway, um, sensitivity is certainly not was not so bad. And now I want to move on to the plan of, of Kagura. Well, first of all, I want to show you the uh, plan of LIGO, Virgo, and Kagura based on the so-called observation scenario paper that was published uh, actually this year, prepared last year. Well. Of course, well, the scenario paper, of course, includes the past history. And, of course, we know during the uh, O1 and O2 observation runs, there were many important observations of the gravitational wave signals. And, well, these results triggered us to think seriously what we should do about our initial observation. Well, in fact, with a single interferometer, we cannot do anything, any science. So, after some discussion, we decided to work even harder to try and try to join all three in late 2019, that is next year. So we really work hard towards this goal. So uh, at the late 2019, we direct to operate uh, the interferometer. So this is the, uh, our next stage. Uh, by the spring next year, of course, we finish the installation. In addition, uh, well, <laughs> commissioning works are very important. And, and we are going to do the commissioning work uh, already in the installation stage. And after the completion of the installation, the, uh, we concentrate on the commissioning. Then, in date next year, we operate the, we would like to operate the full con configuration laser interferometer. Although, of course, maybe the laser power should be much lower than the uh, design one, um, but anyway, this is, okay, uh, this is our 
plan. And well, of course, we'd like to achieve uh, this interferometer configuration. But well, if we, we have some troubles or some problems, then in this case, we have a backup plan that is the, we'd like to operate the interferometer with the cryogenic simple Fabi Perot microsome mode. But of course, well, with this um, simpler mode, we, we do not expect very high sensitivity. So the, the, our hope is to really operate the full configuration uh, interferometer at the end, of, by the end of next year. Then you may ask, um, what will be our sensitivity? Well, again, I want to refer the observation scenario paper. Um, well, these are the, um, say, target sensitivities of um, LIGO, Virgo, and Kagura. And in Kagura, well, we would like to achieve the sensitivity somewhere in this um, blue band and maybe the lower part of this blue band in the next year's run. That is our goal. <laughs> well, now I want to move on to the science goals. Well, this is the uh, map of the uh, ground-based uh, interferometers. Um, well, of course, science output will be maximized by the global network. Therefore, Kagura plans to join the world, world, worldwide network of gravitational wave detection and astronomy, as I said, in late next year, near the end of the O3 observation run of LIGO and Virgo. So what will be the merit of Kagura? Well, from now on, uh, uh, this, these are the quite simple um, calculations. So, well, anyway, let's begin. Well, first of all, let's assume that we require at least three detector operation for, or detection for the detection of the, uh, well, no, three detector operation for the detection of the, um, well, determination of the source direction. Then, if we have only three interferometers, and if the, each of the interferometer has the duty cycle of 70%, then three detector um, operation has the only 34% possibility. If it is, the duty cycle is 80%, even in this case, 51%. And if we have four detectors, including Kagura, then the, um, um, three detector configuration will be achieved at the 65% case, which is almost double the um, three detector operation possibility. So I think um, adding one more detector is really important as far as the uh, um, three, well, as far as the observation is concerned. In addition, uh, this, is, this shows the uh, um, <coughs> antenna patterns of LIGO, Virgo, and Kagura. And well, this is Kagura, and clearly, the sensitive region of Kagura um, is quite um, um, complementary to those of LIGO and Virgo. Therefore, I think the existence of Kagura will help the gravitational wave astronomy. And in addition, say, if we have the uh, um, three detector operation, uh, I mean, LIGO and Virgo and Kagura, then how can we determine the, yes, okay, thank you. Determine the uh, source location. Well, this is the LIGO Virgo only case, and this is adding Kagura. So, well, you can clearly see um, overall the determination of the uh, sky localization improves much better overall. And well, up on average, the sky localization will be improved by almost a factor of three. And furthermore, I want to say that over 90% of the cases, the sky localization 
accuracy is better than 10 percent, uh, no, 10 square degrees. <clears throat> so I think, um, well, Kagura can contribute to the gravitational wave astronomy. And of course, well, the title of the talk is Science Goals. Well, actually, I'm sorry, I don't have much to say about the uh, uh, science goals of Kagura. We just want to contribute to the standard uh, science goals of the ground-based interferometers. So let me summarize. Uh, Kagura is a unique gravitational wave interferometer with the underground site and the cryogenic technology. Kagura, Kagura had the initial cryogenic interferometer operation in April, May this year, and Kagura plans to complete the installation in the spring of next year and join O3 in late next year. So, in conclusion, Kagura would like to contribute to the global network of gravitational wave detectors and uh, contribute to the science of gravitational wave astronomy. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this nice overview. Are there questions? Please. Um, are you not afraid of strong earthquakes in Japan? Uh, this location is the worst location on Earth, I mean, for a, a gravitation detector, because it could move and, uh, I mean, destroy, uh, destroy your apparatus. It's very expensive, I mean. Okay, thank you very much for this point. Well, um, our detector is located in underground. Actually, the, uh, um, the uh, uh, ground motion propagate essentially at the surface of the uh, Earth. Therefore, actually locating the interferometer at the deep underground has a kind of advantage. Um, although we have, of course, earthquakes, but the damage from the earthquake may not be so huge, except for the very nearby huge earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's hope that there will be no earthquake. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah. Thank you for a very interesting talk. Um, I wondered if you could comment on what you think are the greatest risks with the cryogenic technology that you are uh, pioneering. Hmm? Uh, could you say again? I wondered if you could comment on the uh, great, what is the greatest risk associated with the cryogenic uh -huh. technology that you are pioneering? Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, yes. Well, in order to cool down the mirrors, we use cryo coolers, that is a mechanical cooler. And of course, mechanical coolers have vibration. And with this, these mechanical coolers, we have to cool down the mirror, and therefore, the vibration from the cryo cooler should not be propagated to the mirror. That is the most difficult part of the cryogenic uh, interferometer. Okay, if you have another question. Just a, a curiosity, I'm not... Uh... <laughs> expert in the field. Why you cool only one of the mirrors? Oh, only one? Only one. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and not both. Okay. Well, first of all, at that time, well, at the end of April, we have only installed two mirrors out of four. Then why only one? Well, of course, uh, it was po also possible to install, uh, no, to cool down another mirror to, to 20 Kelvin. But, well, considering the uh, overall schedule, we thought that it would be better to only cool down one mirror. <laughs> Even if we have only one cool down mirror, if we have some troubles, then we can 
understand and we can improve the uh, system. Further questions? Okay, I see no. Ah, sorry. If you already have uh, cryogenic mirrors, you can have superconducting support. Can you float it? <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Uh, well, of, of course, that could be a very interesting possibility, but, well, of course, we are almost in the final stage of the construction. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we use the conventional method. Thank you. Okay, I think there's no other further important or urgent question. So we thank you again very much for your talk.